So I've recently began working on this open source app here, which is going to kind of showcase how you can combine a bunch of different technologies with SvelteKit, like Prisma, Lucia for authentication, SvelteKit Superforms, Zod, so on and so forth. And while I'm building this out, I want to make some videos, you know, as I build some things out to kind of showcase how I would handle certain things. So before we dive into what we're going to cover today, I just want to give you a little bit of a tour of this application here. This is like the landing slash blog slash marketing page of the app. So we have this landing page here. We could have an about page, a blog page obviously nothing is here right now, but the goal is to eventually add this functionality to this project. And then we also have authentication set up with Lucia so we can log in with GitHub. And if you notice here, we have an entirely different layout for our sign up and login pages than we do for the rest of the app. And we're using layout groups to accomplish that. And so we can sign in with GitHub here. And then once we're signed in, we can access a dashboard, which again has its own layout. And as you can see here, we're keeping track of the user. And this is just a basic task management CRUD app. This isn't going to be the final design or the final project. I'm just trying to get some basic functionality in so I can get the ball rolling and start doing more things. So we can create task right now. So I can create a random task here. And as you can see, here it is. I can also delete the task as well. And what I wanted to cover in this video in particular is how do we add rate limiting to specific actions or specific interactions within our app, right? So let's say that we wanted to limit how many tasks could be created in a given period of time, and then you know have a different limit for how many tasks could be deleted in a given period of time, right? So that's what we're going to be covering today. Again, this isn't super beginner friendly. We're not starting from scratch here we have you know a basic CRUD application already set up with authentication. So if you're not familiar with how to do those things, I have other videos on my channel that you can reference and then come back to this later on. And so to implement rate limiting, we're going to be using Redis, which is an in-memory data store, super quick, super great for things like rate limiting and caching. And more specifically, we're going to be using Upstash Redis. And Upstash is actually the sponsor of this video and the first sponsor that I've taken on this channel. So please don't tell them, but I would have seriously eventually covered Upstash Redis in a video, whether they sponsored it or not. So I greatly appreciate them reaching out to support the channel. It means a ton. So if you're not familiar with Upstash, they're a serverless data platform. They offer serverless Redis, Kafka, and Qstash. And they're actually what's powering Vercel's KV under the hood, if you're not aware of that as well. And they were designed for the edge. So they have you know global low latency and a REST API, which is super awesome. And if we scroll down here a bit to the pricing, you can see that they offer a very generous free tier for Redis, and they don't require a credit card to get started. So the free tier for Redis gives us you know 10,000 commands per day, and then 20 cents per 100,000 commands as you go. So really you can start to mess around with this, see if it's something that could be useful to you in your application, and then determine if you want to pay later, which is super awesome. So if you want to learn more about Upstash, I will have a link down in the description below. I've already created an account in a database. So if we come over here to my Upstash console, you can see that I have this tasker database created here. And you can see I've executed quite a bit of commands already in testing for this video. Uh, but something important to note is when you create a new database, you want to make sure that the primary region or your right region of the database is as close to your serverless functions as possible. So in this case here, I'm going to be deploying to Vercel in US East 1, which is an AWS data center. I want to make sure that my Upstash Redis instance is also running in US East 1. That way we can mitigate how much network traffic or how much network time is required between us hitting our Vercel function or our serverless function and then us hitting our database to check for a rate limit request. Once you create your database, you can then open it up and it's going to give you a few different options to connect. So as you can see here, these are you know the direct connections to the database and they also have have a REST API as well. So we can just hit it with curl if we wanted to. Uh, we're going to be using Upstash slash Redis, which is their package published NPM here. And as you can see, it's super, super easy to set up. All we do is import Redis. We instantiate a new Redis instance. We're going to pass it our URL and our token, which we're going to actually store inside of environment variables. And then we can just start interacting with Redis like so. But we're not going to be interacting with it directly like this. You certainly could if you wanted to add caching or something of that like to your application. Instead, we're going to be using another package that they offer called Rate Limit, which honestly, Honestly, makes it scary simple to set up a rate limiter in your app. So if we scroll down a bit here to the docs, you can see that we just install it like so. And then we can instantiate a new rate limiter. We're going to pass it our Redis instance, and then we define our algorithm that we want to use. And we can set up the uh, parameters or the arguments here. So in this case here, they're using the sliding window algorithm. They're allowing 10 requests within a 10 second sliding window. You can also turn on analytics if you want, which gives you, I guess, more insights into your rate limiting. And then you can set up a prefix, which will be prefixed to the key in the database. So you can differentiate between the different um, rate limit requests. And then to use it, all we have to do is say await rate limit dot limit and we pass it an identifier. Now this identifier could be an IP address. It could be a user ID. It could be an API key, whatever you're using to identify who it is that you're trying to rate limit. Now, if your API, your app is completely open to the public or it's free and doesn't require users to create an account, then your options are a bit more limited with regard to what you can use as that identifier. You may have to use an IP address or a device ID or something of that like, which can also have, you know, 
of negative side effects because imagine if you had an entire business that was all being natted under the same IP, they're all using your services. Well, technically all those employees could potentially be rate limiting each other accidentally due to them all sharing that same IP address. So you really have to make sure that your limits are high enough or that you understand the implications of what identifier that you choose. And then, so as you can see here, they're checking to see, was it successful? So they're destructuring a returned object and they're getting the success, which is a Boolean. And if it wasn't successful, then we can just return or throw or do something else. And then if it was, then we can just do the expensive calculation. For this example, we're going to be writing or deleting from a database. And that's as simple as this. Now they do have a few different things that get returned in this object they're destructuring. So you can access the limit, which is the maximum number of requests allowed within that window. You can see how many requests the user has remaining. So you could say, hey, you only have five more you know, requests or five more tasks that you can create today until you have to wait to tomorrow. And then we also have this reset, which is a Unix timestamp of when the limits are going to be reset. So this will be useful for, let's say you wanted to show a message saying, hey, please wait 10 more seconds before trying again or something like that. And then if we scroll down a bit here, they have quite a bit of docs that you can read through to fully understand what it is that you're using. But if we look here using multiple limits, they give an example, which is what we're going to be using, where we can define, you know, an object called rate limits. We can specify free and a paid. In our case, we're going to do a create and delete and then have different rate limits for the different actions, right? And then if we scroll down a bit further, they talk about the different algorithms. So as you can see here, these are the ones they offer out of the box. And then they mention that each has its pros and cons. What I would recommend you do is watch a video. I'll leave a link to a couple down in the description below that go into these different algorithms in more detail because there are certainly trade-offs and certainly circumstances when you want to use one over the other. So I'm not going to cover the details in this video, but they have a fixed window, sliding window, and token bucket. We're going to be using the sliding window, which if you want to learn more about, you can read this description here. It's a good high level overview of how this works. So now inside of our application code, I've went ahead and installed those two packages, upstash slash Redis, as well as added the environment variables. So you can see here, we have upstash Redis URL and upstash Redis token. This is the example file, the actual token and URL are inside of my .env. And the action for both creating and deleting are both inside of the same route. So if I go to this plus page server on the dashboard, and we scroll down a bit here, you can see the create task action as well as the delete task action. And for both of these, what we're doing first is we're checking to see, do you have a valid session? So using Lucia for authentication, we're checking to see if they have a valid session. If they don't, we're throwing an error. And then we're going to validate the data using super forms, returning a failure if the form was not valid. Now, something to think about is where would this rate limiter best be placed, right? It doesn't make much sense to place it before we validate the session, right? Nor does it make much sense to place it before we validate the data. What we really want to limit is our most expensive operation or the most detrimental should it be abused. And that is our database interactions here, right? So creating and deleting the task. So we want to place our rate limiter after we validate the form and session, but before we actually add the task. So first things first, I'm going to go inside of my live server directory. And again, I have a bunch of files here because this is already an existing application, but I'm going to create a redis.ts file and I'm going to go ahead and set up this rate limiter. As we saw in the doc example, we have this redis instance here that we're instantiating using our our Redis URL and token. And then we're defining a rate limit object. And here we are setting a prefix of rate limit create and rate limit delete. Now for this example, I'm just gonna use the same limit for the same sliding window, one request within a 15 second sliding window for both of these, just to demonstrate actually hitting the rate limit and how we can handle them. Of course, you can change these, adjust these, but again, this is just for an example. So then once we have all this defined, we can actually head back into our actions and I'm just going to paste this in. And as you can see here, we're in importing that rate limit object and then I'm calling dot create. So this is for the create action and I am limiting it. And then the identifier in this case is going to be our user's user ID. So whoever's making this request, we're going to use that ID to identify them. And then we're destructuring success and reset and reset, as we mentioned earlier, is a Unix timestamp in milliseconds for when the limits are reset. So then we can just simply calculate the time remaining. So how much time in seconds is remaining with this simple expression here, we're subtracting the current time from reset, dividing it by a thousand to get the seconds, which will then allow us to display a nice friendly message on our client side, telling them to wait a specific number of seconds before they try again, if they hit that rate limit. And this message being returned here is from Superform. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing and I'm going to do the same thing for the delete task. So I'm going to place it underneath the validation, except for rate limit dot create. I'm going to change it to rate limit dot delete. Okay. So now that we're actually handling this here, let's look at how we're handling it on the client side. So if I go to the add task form, which is where I'm actually adding in or creating a new task or where this form resides, you can see here we have a super form setup and I'm getting the message, which is that message we would return from our action. And then if we look down here, I'm checking 
to see if there's a message, then I want to render out this alert that says error and then displays the message like so. We're doing the same thing for delete as well. And that's inside of this task table component. Again, very similar setup here. If there's a message, we're going to render out an alert. So now if we come back into our application and try to test this out, so I'm going to try to create a task. Hello. And it lets me create that task. But if I try to create another one too quickly, you're going to see that I'm getting, you're doing that too much. Please wait and try again. If I try to create really quick, you're going to see now that I have to wait, you know, nine, eight, seven. Every time I hit enter, it's, you know, the timer's slowly dropping down. And that's from that time remaining calculation that we're making on our server side. But eventually I can actually make the record. And if we go into our data browser of our Upstash database and we refresh, we're going to see here that we're getting create a few different times here, right? So these are the different records that we've created along with their rate limits. So as you can see, they eventually start to expire after the time period ends for that limit. But this is basically keeping track of how many we've created. So it's able to reference this whenever it checks to see have you exceeded that rate limit or not. So I guess a better example might be if we go back into our Redis here and we instead update this to let's say three. So we'll have three within a 15 second sliding window. So when I refresh, you're going to see it's everything is expired. We no longer have any rate limits. We haven't made any requests within a window that it can keep track of. So if we go back into our app and we create a new task, when we create another task and we go into our data browser, refresh, you're going to see that we've created two, right? So now if we try to create another one, it should work. And then if we try to create another one, it's going to work again because we've exceeded that 15 second window. And if you scroll through here, you're going to see we've created two and two. But if we try to create too many too quick, you're going to see that we're hitting this window. And again, this is a sliding window. I guess it'd be easier to demonstrate with a fixed window. But the idea here is that this is just keeping accounts per window of requests made. So here, inside of this window, we've created three. In this previous one, we'd only created two. And then eventually they expire. And the same thing goes for deleting them as well. So right now we only have one for delete. And as you can see, we had to wait two seconds because that window was nearing its end. So now we have to wait nine seconds. And if we check our data browser, you can see here that we have these two different windows eventually this top one is going to expire here in a few seconds. So that's what's going on behind the scenes. Really, what's important to know is that these records here, there's a record per window, and that record is updated with the count of how many have been created or how many requests have been made to the rate limiter within that window. And then it's able to check, okay, has it exceeded the maximum number of requests that's allowed? If so, that's when it returns success is false, and we render that error on our app. So yeah, that's how simple it is to add rate limiting to your application in SvelteKit using Upstash Redis. Again, and thank you so much to Upstash for sponsoring and supporting the channel. It means a ton. Don't forget to check them out. I'll leave a link down in the description below. Thank you all to everybody who's viewed this video, who's liked my video, subscribed. It means a ton to me. Thank you all so much. And I will see you in the next one.